Every single year in a redraft league, I always see guys who are just going way higher than they ever should be in a fantasy football draft. And over 10 plus years of playing fantasy football, it really adds up the amount of time that I've played. And I just see it so often that I just need to make a video about this because I'm seeing the same thing this year. With wide receivers, I'm seeing wide receivers that are just going earlier than other guys that we should just be waiting a round or two to take instead because they match the upside that those guys have. So we're going through five wide receivers today that you just need to stop drafting and go ahead and draft another five guys that are typically a round or two later than them. And I'm giving away free F event hats right now. I will give away five next week on August 21st. That's a Wednesday. If I hit 11,000 subscribers by then and I only give them to somebody who goes down there, drops like on the video, is subscribed to the channel and gives me their best sleeper defense for 2024 fantasy football. So please go down there and drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel and give me your favorite sleeper defense this year. So let's go ahead and start out with Mr. Chris Olave. Chris Olave of the New Orleans Saints going 24th off the board according to ESPN right now. Now, this is not like a bad player in my opinion. I think he does have a pretty safe floor. I just don't think that his ceiling is that high. So when I'm looking at a player like this, I would much rather just wait. If I'm at that 2-3 turn, just wait another round, a couple more picks to get Michael Pittman Jr. Michael Pittman Jr. is going just a couple picks later, and his ADP right now in ESPN is 29.6 overall. So when I'm looking at Chris Olave versus Michael Pittman right now, if we just line the two of these guys up based on last year, like their targets per game, relatively similar. Their production is relatively similar. Really, since they're both kind of in offenses where they're clearly the number one wide receiver, but one of them has a really high potential quarterback, and the other one's quarterback is <laughs> at best middle of the pack. I don't know how many people consider Derek Carr middle of the pack these days, but if you do, he could, we can all acknowledge that he's regressing in his NFL career. So really what's gonna separate these two guys is the target share, is the total amount of targets that they get on a yearly basis. So when we're just looking at ba guys based on targets last year, Michael Pittman Jr. out-targeted Chris Olave by almost 20 targets last year. Michael Pittman Jr. almost had 160 targets compared to Chris Olave's 138. So if I'm looking at these guys and they basically have the same amount of touchdown upside in their offense, they're both the wide receiver ones, I want to take the guy who's going to get the more targets. And especially since I can get Michael Pittman Jr. just a couple picks later than Chris Olave right here. So Chris Olave, I just think with this current price with him, it's fine. Like, it, it's not a huge problem if you don't take him, in my opinion. I think he does have upside to a point, but I actually think he's being drafted pretty close to his ceiling. Whereas, in my opinion, if Anthony Richardson ends up working out for the Indianapolis Colts this year, this could be a guy who does really well and feeds Michael Pittman the ball quite a bit because they just paid the dude this offseason. He's not going anywhere. He's their clear number one target. So in my opinion, I would just much rather take the guy with an ascending quarterback than a guy with a descending quarterback. Now, the next wide receiver that I want to go through here is Mike Evans. Mike Evans right now is currently being taken 33rd point five off the board on ESPN's ADP. Now, with Mike Evans, he's obviously such a boom or bust player. Like, I remember last year, not many people thought that he was going to have a top 10 wide receiver season. He obviously ended up doing really well, but if you actually look at the numbers right there, the targets per game were not the reason that he was that high of a finish. It was because of the touchdown total that he had last year. His touchdown total was absolutely outrageous, and the problem with that is that touchdowns are so hard to predict year to year for any player. I don't care if it's wide receivers, I don't care if it's tight end, I don't care if it's running back. It's extremely hard to predict the success level as far as touchdowns go for any particular player in fantasy football. So Mike Evans, if you just take away those touchdowns, cut them in half, he's not going to be that great in fantasy this year. So considering that he has a back end third round pick, again, I would just much rather wait a couple more picks take a younger player with a better quarterback and that guy is Nico Collins right here. Nico Collins is going 37.8 ADP off the board in ESPN drafts right now. So with Nico Collins, I'm not trying to come out here and say that Nico Collins is going to have 160 targets and he's going to be just this 1500 yard wide receiver. I'm not saying that necessarily, but I do not think it's out of the cards at all. So just looking at the two of these guys combined, 
The problem that Nico faces compared to Mike Evans is that Mike Evans did have more targets than him last year. There's no question about that. But here's the thing with Nico Collins that he does have, and Mike Evans just simply doesn't at this point of his career, is because Mike Evans in his 30s now is not getting any better. And especially the biggest concern that I really have with this Tampa Bay offense this year is they don't have Dave Canales there anymore. That offensive coordinator made that team really good offensively last year between Rashad White and Mike Evans. They don't have him anymore. So who's the answer at the offensive coordinator position? Is he going to immediately come in there and recognize that Mike Evans and Baker Mayfield can work again? I'm not convinced of this entirely. I understand they just signed Baker Mayfield to an extension. I get it. They're all under contract. But Baker Mayfield is not exactly C.J. Stroud level quarterback here. And according to Vegas Insider right now, C.J. Stroud is projected to be the second highest passing yard total behind Patrick Mahomes in 2024. So they are expecting, everybody's expecting really, for C.J. Stroud to have an incredible year throwing the football. Now obviously, he's got other targets there with Stephon Diggs and with Tank Dell. But this argument applies no matter how many people say it doesn't matter. It absolutely matters. Nico Collins has the fourth most guaranteed money on any contract of the Houston Texans in 2024. That matters. That totally matters here. So Nico Collins, by far and away, the most expensive wide receiver they have in the, in the room. You know they're going to try to get him the ball as much as they can. So Nico Collins will continue to be, at the very least, a 1B to Stephon Diggs maybe being the 1A. Or Tank Dell maybe being the 1A. At the very least, Nico Collins, in my opinion, is actually the safest wide receiver in Houston and also presents probably the most upside as well. So he's a better pick than Mike Evans here. Now, at number three, the next guy that I want to talk about, I get, I've get, i ragged on him for so many years. It feels kind of like just I'm going through the motions a little bit. DK Metcalf is sitting here 37.8 ADP on ESPN drafts. I don't, I'm, I don't hate DK Metcalf. I promise I don't. For anybody who's been there with me from the beginning, you know I've just never really been a fan of DK Metcalf. And I'm sorry, but it is for good reason. The problem with DK Metcalf is that he has dropped in fantasy finish every single year. Every year. Just getting worse since 2020. That's just the reality of DK Metcalf's situation. Finally, this year, he dropped into like wide receiver two, wide receiver three territory. So it's like, is he going to have a bounce back year? What's going to happen with DK Metcalf this year? I don't like his chances. Jackson Smith and Jigba is coming along in this offense. And by the way, first round pick. They're going to try to get him the ball a quite a bit this year with the new offensive coordinator, Ryan Grubb, who has spoken really highly of Jack Smith and Jigba this year. So just combining all those factors, DK Metcalf is boom or bust, but I really don't think that he has super high potential to boom a bunch this year, considering Jackson Smith and Jigba and with the weaker quarterback with Geno Smith. So I really don't see like a ton of boom potential with DK Metcalf, whereas a guy going a couple picks behind him, basically almost an entire round behind him, Debo Samuel. Debo Samuel has four, is 47.7 ADP on ESPN right now. Debo Samuel is just as boom or bust, except the good thing about Debo Samuel is that his boom games are actually higher than, Debo, than DK Metcalf's are. Debo Samuel has a direct path to being a wide receiver one in fantasy football. We just need all the things to hit right. With DK Metcalf, if everything hits right, at most, you're looking at like a wide receiver 15, wide receiver 16 at this point of his career with this offense. Debo Samuel, the good thing about him, obviously, is that he handles touches both through the target game and through the ground game for the San Francisco 49ers. He is invaluable to them. And honestly, like he's come out looking so much better. He looks really better and better every day with this Brandon Ayuk drama. Now, I want to preface this. By the time you're watching it, maybe Brandon Ayuk is gone, but I actually think Ayuk is going to be a Niner this year. So it might not end up affecting him that much entirely. But I will say this, with Debo Samuel here, I just see a guy who is just ultra important to the San Francisco offense. They need him in order to hit really big games on offense in particular. So with Debo Samuel, I just think he simply has more importance to this offense at this point of his career than DK Metcalf does because they're trying to move towards Jackson Smith, the Jigba led offense. Now, the next guy that I want to talk about here is Chris Godwin. Chris Godwin's also another guy that I've consistently not loved for the past several years. And again, I really do think it's for good reason. 
Chris Godwin, since his 2021 injury, this is just simply a guy who has gotten consistently worse. He tore his ACL at the end of 2021. So he comes into 2022, has a slow start to the season. Some people think maybe that was the bad, maybe that was the issue with him. Maybe he was just slower coming off the injury. That's a relatively common thing. Well, then he comes back in 2023 and does even worse on a full 17 game span. Chris Godwin is just simply doesn't look as explosive when he's playing as he used to before the injury. He's 28 years old. So maybe, and I've actually heard this quite a bit, maybe he does have a bounce back season in him. I just really don't believe in it. I really don't, to be honest with you. I look at this guy and I say to myself, 28 years old, again, with an offense that is lacking the, the engine that really made that team run with Dave Canales. Now they have a new offensive coordinator and he's got Baker Mayfield, who he did not exactly work well with last year. And then they have Jalen McMillan, their third round rookie this year, who, by the way, is going to make an impact. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers look to have him running in two wide receiver sets on the outside. So Jalen McMillan is absolutely going to play a factor in this offense this year. So where does it leave Chris Godwin? I tell you what it, where it leaves him. It leaves him with a really low ceiling and honestly, not that high of a floor as a lot of people think. Whereas this guy right here, she Rice, his ceiling is so much higher than Chris Godwin's. He's going 97.3 ADP off the board on ESPN. Now I wanna preface this right away by saying just a couple weeks ago, I told people to not draft Rasheed Rice in an ESPN redraft format. It really applies to every redraft format. The reason I said that, we are still relatively early on in the off season because once we get to August, things really speed up. Obviously things are moving at lightning pace right now, but there's been no word still about a suspension coming for Rasheed Rice. A lot of people don't think that's going to come till next year. As far as we sit here today, on August 14th, the time I'm filming this video right here, I drafted Rasheed Rice in one of my ESPN leagues just tonight. I like Rasheed Rice so much at cost right now because if he does end up playing, the upside is just so spectacular in an offense that, again, Mahomes projects out to be the leader in passing yards in 2024. And again, Baker Mayfield is down closer to the bottom, according to Vegas Insider. So they don't predict that much upside for Baker Mayfield this year. Whereas with Rasheed Rice, he's playing with the best quarterback in football and is clearly the wide receiver one on this offense right here. So upside, absolutely Rasheed Rice. And floor, really honestly, Rasheed Rice, we're all being honest with ourselves. And again, you can get this guy literally just a couple picks later. So I'd rather wait around and take Rasheed Rice at this point in the offseason, since I really don't think he's going to be suspended this year. Now, the last guy that I really want to talk about, I want to talk about two rookies right now, because I love this point in the draft right here that we're about to get into, because there's a lot of rookie values here that you could take a shot on. Now, one of the guys that I think you should not take the shot on this year is Roma Dunze. 122.8 ADP on ESPN. And it really does kind of kill me to say it a little bit because I really like Roma Dunze, the player. Like prospect, player, I think he's a really good player. So it really does kill me to say it, but the problem that Roma Dunze is gonna face right away is target competition. Target competition is high. DJ Moore, expensive wide receiver they just signed a couple weeks ago. Keenan Allen, definitely in the back end of his career and apparently is overweight at the time of this filming right now. So maybe he ends up playing more than Keenan Allen relatively early on. As far as we sit here right now though, Roma Dunze, like there really just hasn't been much word about him really sneaking into starting lineups for them. So I really have a hard time seeing it. And if we were talking about getting guys like Cortland Sutton or like Dontavian Wicks around Roma Dunze and said, yeah, take the shot on Roma Dunze. The problem here is that Ladd McConkie is going just a couple picks later and there is absolutely no reason, no reason at all, Ladd McConkie should be going behind Roma Dunze. There's no reason for it. Ladd McConkie also has a great quarterback that he's going to play with this year. Justin Herbert is not going to throw as much as he used to because the Chargers with Jim Harbaugh and Greg Roman are going to be run first, make no mistake about it. But Ladd McConkie is with a great quarterback who will be extremely efficient on less throws this year and the competition for targets is low. It's low. It's Joshua Palmer and then you have DJ Chark right now. Like Quinn Johnson's not even in the picture as far as we can tell right now. 
Ladd McConkie is the best route runner of the group and really the most polished wide receiver of the group. So when I look at this line on underdog, him hitting 750 receiving yards is a smash over for me. This is a guy who is absolutely going to lead this team in targets. And while he might fill more of a Keenan Allen role where he doesn't see quite as many yards per reception, he's going to have so much volume that he's going to easily surpass 850, 900 receiving yards this year, unless he gets injured. So if you're as bullish on Ladd McConkie as I am, join Underdog today using the link in the comments below. And when you sign up, use code FFN. And when you deposit $10 or more, they will give you up to $250 in free bonus cash. So they will throw free money at you so you can increase the amount that you have on this line with Ladd McConkie. Because again, I think this is just a smash pick right here for Ladd McConkie to get more than 750 receiving yards. So join Underdog today using the code in the comments below. So let me know what you think of these guys in the comments below. And if you want to see the best draft strategy that is going to break your league in 2024, click on this video right here.